Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays Enter the Gungeon. Last episode, probably like the most successful run I've ever had, in terms at least of the, the final result. This episode, no, 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 you don't understand. <laughs> you don't play as the convict. You play as uh, Furiosa from Mad Max over here. So I'm hoping we can get a little bit of a streak going, but a little bit of the pressure's off, I can breathe easy. I am still dealing with um, this, I, I wouldn't say like, uh, Obsession, but this idea that maybe the only floor that matters in Gungeon once you get past a certain level of adequacy is actually bullet hell. There was a thread on the uh, on the Gungeon subreddit, and it was about a tweet that I actually made. And the tweet that I made was like, in, in case you missed it, which you know, <laughs> twittercom LP if you're interested in uh, following my shit posts. But anyway, um, was basically like, I feel like Pablo as Dan Giesling would say, but also I feel like um, really maybe the best strategy in terms of survival is what I've been talking about recently where you just use like the, the budget revolver for as long as is necessary uh, until you get to bullet hell and then you throw everything you've got in bullet hell at it. And people were like, honestly, he's gotten some bad luck lately. I've never seen luck this bad where he's had like, you know, six runs in a row where he's gotten no ammo drops on, the, on bullet hell or even, you know, from the forge and beyond. But... I, people, I have to admit, on the internet, I always prime myself for people to be like, he's just bad. Which is not necessarily false. However, um, people largely seemed to agree, of course, we're getting ammo drops like crazy here. So I'm kind of thinking that we're going to just continue to take this approach of, uh, that was a terrible dodge there. HP's not so good. We're going to continue to take this approach of just, um, you know, going balls to the wall. And we're gonna use our budget revolver as much as is possible. If we get like ammo synthesizer or something like that, we might switch it up. But, right, different uh, controller bindings. Didn't mean to blank there. Um, but honestly, I do feel like uh, it's almost the most sensible option. Like it seemed to work pretty well in the robot run. Did we end up with a surplus of guns? Yeah, but I'd r much rather err on the side of having a surplus of guns that actually have ammo uh, than, you know, having a deficit of guns that have ammo. Cause on bullet hell, it it's so important. You know, in that thread, which you can find yourself at r slash enter the gungeon, a couple days old at this point, but, um, there was some good discussion about, like, the actual difficulty of bullet hell. Mostly, like, is bullet hell fun, or is bullet hell, um, kind of, I don't want to say bad design, but unfun design. And there are a lot of people in there, and I'm not trying to throw shade at gungeon at all, that were like, I just stopped my runs after the forge because it's not fun going down to bullet hell and getting constantly whittled down. And I do think that there's, like... There are echoes of my actual opinion in there. I almost feel like just beating the dragon, and Austin and I have had this this chat as well. I think we'll just open a, a green chest. Metronome's okay. Um, Austin and I, Austin and I have had this conversation as well. Uh, not Austin, Last Grey Wolf, but Austin of the Stone Cold Steve variety. He's also a big Gungeon player. Most people don't know that. Um, no, of course it's Last Grey Wolf. But he said, um, you know, beating the dragon is a little too easy. And I, I agree with that. If, if if it was just about beating the dragon, we would basically already be at the point where we could rattle off like a 10 streak without even, without feeling like we encountered too much difficulty in it. I feel like the, for me, the right sweet, oh, we are gonna need to buy a key, but at least we get the chance to buy a key. The sweet spot is uh, somewhere between the difficulty of the dragon. You know what? I feel like we should go for it. The difficulty of the dragon and the difficulty of um, of bullet hell. Right now, I do feel like bullet hell is not necessarily too tough, but it's tough in two very annoying ways. One being that it sucks up your ammo like it's some kind of ammunition-based vacuum cleaner. The other one being that it's essentially not possible to not get hit. You're gonna you're gonna lose HP as time goes on just because bullet hell is so goddamn long. And of course, the rooms are tough as well. But um, it's, it really does come down to the rooms being super long as well. So, you know, I, I'm not... Please, as always on the internet, I, I think there's the temptation to be like, Yeah, this one thing about a game sucks. Ergo, the game sucks. I don't believe that at all. I think Gungeon is uh, pretty close to being like a masterpiece of recent roguelite indie games. I mean that sincerely. It might sound like faint praise because I put a lot of modifiers on it. But genuinely one of the best games of the year, in my opinion. But that one little little quirk to it, uh, admittedly. I'm not saying it's put me off too much, but it is annoying, at least. Especially, you know, it, it ended up not being a concern until we started making it the bullet hell. You know, I'm basically every single run, and now I'm like, I am sick of getting my ass beat in here. So we did break the metronome, but we're picking up, uh, 
Okay, so we could buy a blank, maybe. But we are picking up a gun here, anyway. And this is the, um, y Yari launcher? Yeah. I don't know. I believe that this used to be considered relatively bad. We're gonna hope for a blank drop so we can get to the secret room. And I'll, I'll probably buy one if we... If we have the option to. It may have recently, uh, been buffed a little bit. But... I remember reading that this is not necessarily considered, you know, like, one of the best, uh... Demonic tier weapons in the game, like weapons that you pick up from a demonic chest, but I think... You know, it's certainly better than beating this guy with our starting pistol. It goes through ammo ridiculously quickly, but... Still, the, the damage output is... Oh, I got stuck on the wall! I got stuck on the wall! Oh well. No flawless, life goes on, a little bit bummed out. We did get ammo at least, no blank. 21 might be enough to buy it. Phoenix is a pretty bad weapon. I'm only like 10% salty about that, honestly. Like, I, I should have flawless that. I just, I saw myself get stuck on the corner. Um, blanks are 20. So this is a bit of a gamble, admittedly. Because we could pretty easily just not get anything worth money in here. But I think as long as, if we get a key, that's amazing. If we get a chest, we can open, that's amazing. If we get armor, or blanks... Well, blanks would be bad. If we get armor, even trade. We got a key and a chest that contains 50 credits, which is enormous. Um, and then with our 50 credits, I do think we're, we're going to need keys at some point. We might as well buy one. We, there's only one for sale. We might as well buy one. And uh, to be real with you, I would have loved to have picked up the mahogany as well. But we can get through one more floor for sure with our budget revolver as our like principal option here. Or we could use the phoenix. But honestly, I think the phoenix is kind of bad. So I think we made up for not getting the Flawless there with a, a relatively smart secret room play, but we should have had the Flawless as well. That was my... I, I shouldn't have dodged into the corner, I should have dodged around it. That's basically what it comes down to. And we traded our Flawless for the blank that we used for ammo belt. So is that worth it? Maybe, I don't know. I, I, I'm always talking about how important ammo is. Uh, I don't know if ammo belt really does the trick for us in terms of like swinging the run in our favor, but it seems not bad. Um, I'll be the first to tell you as well. Taking some real terrible damage thus far. Luckily, early on in the game, taking damage doesn't really seem to, you know, impact you that much. Metronome, I think, is okay. I don't think that it's, like, a game winner in and of itself, but anything that gives you, like, you know, more firepower, essentially, is good. Especially because we might be using the same gun for basically everything but the boss fight, if I'm being honest. Um... So the Yari Launcher is something that, in the future, we may look to... Oh, shouldn't have gotten that close. Something we may look to, uh, if not trade in, at least, like, find out the best way to use it. I'm, I'm a little skeptical of what that will be, but watch out for the explosive barrel. Alright, now that that's popped. Easy enough. Get our full red hearts back. Two keys is good, and actually a decent amount of credits as well. Honestly, we got super lucky that we got 50 credits out of that secret room. Like, I would have been happy trading a blank for a key. That would have been like a five credit shift for us. Instead, we traded a blank. We traded 20 credits for a 25 credit key, and then a 50 credit drop, and then HP as well. So that's really like, I'm not going to say it's a top 1% of secret rooms, but it was a really, really low percentage, high reward, high yield secret room for us. Without a doubt. I have to weigh, like, how much I want to see that thing die quickly versus how much I like having the full bonus from the metronome right now. I don't think it's the be-all, end-all to, like, trade away the metronome bonus temporarily to switch to a different weapon. It's just, you know, it's risk-reward like anything else, but... I Why not? We got two blanks. Let's, let's go for it. Not the Gorgon, so we can use the uh, Molotov. So, I have to feel like we probably got the right enemy to fight here. I would like for you to die. I don't really care how we use our ammo, honestly. Oh, we're empty. We're empty. Lucky us. <laughs> like, if we use our ammo to kill the little bit holster, that doesn't bother me. Really should not be on this side of the map, though, but that's what the blank is for. Okay, problem solved. Easy fight, but as you can see, the Yari launcher is not going to be, like, reliable for killing a lich or anything like that. Now, fish in a barrel is pretty good. Obviously, if we get something like the Gungeon, I'll be 
super thrilled about that. We can reload instantly inside of the Gungeon's Creep, but uh, for now, so far so good. You know, they're still playing the victory music for us as well. And quite honestly, we flippin' deserve it! Okay, there goes the metronome, unfortunately. But then we started building it back up again when they hit us. At least it only took some armor. Which, I don't know if that sentence actually means what I meant it to mean. At least it only took some armor. Wouldn't we rather it takes HP at this point because it's, like, refillable more easily? I don't know. I try not to worry about early game minutia too much anymore. Instead, focus on, like, the long-term implications of, you know, what taking damage means. And as anybody but the robot, the long-term implications of taking damage are relatively minor, I think. Felt like a chest room is a chest room. Hegemony Carbine. Breaks the metronome anyway, so... Just check it. Trying to be a little bit more paranoid. Um, honestly, the Hegemony Carbine, I think, could be a reasonably good replacement for the Budget Revolver. Uh, later. I mean, even, like, on the third floor, I don't even feel the need to apologize for using the Budget Revolver. I think that's just sensible. Ooh, we have a Cursed Shop. If you buy something from the Cursed Shop, you get 2.5 levels of curse, right? So, 6th chamber, I've heard, is trash. Wax wings for 39, I think is definitely worth picking up. Um, do we want to buy the heart container? I actually feel like I'm starting to value heart containers less and less. Wax wings is huge for basically giving you the, uh, uh, amulet of the pit lord ability. Like, you can't take damage from falling into pits. It also opens up a lot of dodges, in particular on, uh, on the forge. The fact that you don't have to worry as much about um, watching out for those forge hammers on those rooms. Okay, beat this room without taking damage. We'll reward you handsomely. Fantastic. So this is really um, the only one of these rooms that actually has the potential to go wrong, I think. <laughs> Every other room is like without dodge rolling, automatic. Basically. At least after the first time you roll in and fuck it up. Uh, we get a med kit. Does it beat the Molotov? Like, the Molotov's pretty good. But, I guess the med kit is better for us. And we can use it on bullet health to good effect. But, oh, that was really stupid of me. We just got a hard container. So that, like, super incentivizes me, in my opinion, to not buy one. Uh, we use both keys, I'd say, to pretty good effect. I'm gonna buy a key. And I think that's it. You, and I'm only buying the key here as a preventative measure so that on the next floor, um, you know, w when the keys are going to be more expensive, it's it's going to be fine. So, stick with the budget revolver a little bit longer, even though we've got a ton of ammo for the uh, hegemony carbine. It's not great enough that I feel the need to immediately switch, and the budget revolver is fine, especially with a little bit of a buff from the Necronomicon. So, we got HP, I think we bought the right stuff from the curse shop, and honestly, we're moving right along. 5 HP is a great situation to be in. Um, we do need Yari Launcher ammo. As much as it's a little underpowered, maybe, just in terms of, like, the amount of ammo that it has, um, it is still, by far, our best choice for, like, fast damage output. So I think it would be real silly for me to, to not embrace that right now. And honestly, the Hegemony Rifle might be pretty good as kind of, like, a backup boss killer. Just because, it, you know, it, it fires at range. I really thought I was out of the way of that one. But, I, I don't think the hitboxes are lying. Just saying, in my brain, I ran the numbers on that, and I said, you're good, man. That's okay, this guy's going down either way. Gotta say, as the, uh, as the convict, I do sort of wish that, um, the budget revolver came with a little bit more, uh, clip size, but... That's mostly a biased opinion coming from somebody who wants to use this weapon for quite some time. <laughs> and of course, like many things in life, it may be that this, like, uh, budget revolver strategy does not work in every single situation. Maybe there's some characters, uh, that works better for than others, you know? Many things in life are, uh, not black and white, but instead shades of gray. Eh, haha, <laughs> 50 shades of gray, dot D-A-E. Um... Okay, we can just fly over this. All around the world, gungeons crumble for me. Who knows how long I've lost in gungeon? Okay. Sugar Ray, who said that? You get the idea. Okay, probably should have been hit one of those, but that's okay. Just take your time. 
You know what? I'm, I'm fairly quickly realizing that probably as the convict fourth floor, we're going to want to switch to a different weapon. And it doesn't need to be outrageously strong compared to this, but it does need to be stronger, I think. And I think the Hegemony Carbine, you know, the fact that it has 720 shots or whatever in it, 700 now because we've spent some looking for secret rooms, that gives it like a huge leg up. But we're doing fine here still. 5 HP and we got we got it all maxed out. At least for now. One key for a green chest is fine. Valor Morghulis is actually pretty terrible, I think. But we might as well use it. And uh, the whole point there is basically just to make our life easier. Uh, it may actually be... I think it's okay if you take it down to bullet hell, but it's not worth getting rid of the medkit for sure. Um... And it may actually be a nerf for us, because if we kill enemies with Valor Morghulis... What is that room? Is that a cursed uh, chest? If you kill enemies with the with the iron coin, then if a consumable drops, the rat's going to take it. Which is, it just seems like a kick in the teeth a little bit, but like it's not like that item needs to be any worse. But in the end, you know, it is what it is. And, and we get some value out of it. Who knows what we might have gotten out of it. Maybe it saved us from taking damage. Um on a room that would otherwise be pretty annoying. So the Yari Launcher definitely gets the ammo here. Uh, it's Metroid Room, which is like Cursed Shop. No, it's Fairy Room. Okay, yeah, that's right. It looks like uh, it looks like Samus's ship, which is also her helmet. That's all I'm saying. And yeah, okay, I don't know what Samus's ship is called, right? Do you, need, do you want to get that question answered? You get Nick on the show. And, you know, I've played Metroid. I've played Super Metroid. Those are the only two I've played. Well, that's not true. I played, um... Zero Mission? Or, I think I played Fusion, not Zero Mission. Okay, so we did get a blank. What did this guy take from me? Do I, do I really want to know? Oh, never mind. He didn't take anything. Maybe the rat doesn't take it anymore. There has been, like, a, a change. Well, this is real bad. Um, I don't... Can we extinguish it with the gun that shoots fire? No, we cannot. So... Instead, we will just blow it up and hope to get something out of it. That's okay. My fault for going to the item room before the shop, honestly. Forgot we had fish in a barrel as well. That's actually like a pretty okay gun. It also confuses enemies. Now, I hate to fall back on this... Oh, that was hate to fall back on this strat. But maybe real sweet for us to take down to uh, bullet hell as a room clear. Not, not the best. But decent enough. Couldn't Valor Morghulis uh, this room, could you? Had to be that earlier room. It's okay. Not a problem. Keep in mind, we got uh, the fairy in a jar room here as well. It's not fairy in a jar, but, you know, the fairy room, so... I'm completely okay with that. I will say, though, I was kind of like unenthusiastic about getting rid of the uh, about getting rid of the Molotov. I think the Molotov, I underrated it for a long time and now I respect it. But the thing about the Molotov is first off, it doesn't give us HP so that like puts it a couple of the med kit as is. But then beyond that, um, it doesn't work against so many bosses as you get further and further into the game. So I guess like I like having the Molotov early and then replacing it. I can't be too salty about that. But uh, yeah, the, the, the fact that it like doesn't function against the Dragon is a bummer, um, but it it roasts the kill pillars. But that's the you know, that's the rub, I suppose. That's the you're playing the variance game at that point. So I do think, in contrast to like my earlier strategy, we have two high ammo, okay room clearers, and we should probably embrace them after this floor. Now, I am kind of putting my life in the game's hands to give me some more ammo for those. But I guess later on, if we have to use the budget revolver, we have to. You know, we don't have any control over it. We should try to embrace optimal strategy. So this room got killed. What did you take? Thanks for the ammo. Uh, not that much of a bummer. And this room got toasted as well. Um, let's get the snowballer. I don't think it's worth buying. I do think it's worth getting two keys. We'll probably start thinking... Just checking. We'll probably start thinking on the next floor, like, um, maybe it's sensible to not buy things and save our money to cherry pick an item out of the forge shop. But for now, uh, I think that this is 
this is the right decision. That way, you know, we're still getting cheap keys. Got three blanks for this fight. I would really like to get the flawless here. Just see what we got going on here. You never know. It could be like a gun game or something. Ooh, I just bit my own tongue. Could be a gun game or something like that. It's another curse shop. Oh, we're gonna be so cursed. But oh, we can't. We can't afford it. Disregard. What about if we if we could only buy the charm torn and then steal everything else? Because the blood brooch is super useful. But I don't think we're probably not gonna be able to get it. I don't think it's gonna make the difference between life and death. Um, probably. So it's the it's the tread knot. We could pretty easily lose our flawless here, but um, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna try not to. It's it's easier to fight the treadnought than the cannon balrog, at least in my opinion. Not not that that's a controversial opinion at all, since the treadnought nerf. We've only got one more shot left in this, then we're out. What comes next? Hegemony carbine. Tons of blanks, baby. Okay, we got got a little damage buff on the the Gemini carbine. I know what you're thinking. Why are you so close to this guy? I'm thinking the same thing. I'm trying to get away, but he keeps getting closer. Come on, come on, come on. We got him. We got him. It's not my favorite fight, but it went okay. And do we take, I don't know, Yari launcher ammo at this point? I feel like, I don't know, I'm not sure. Mine cutter seems to show up all the time. Happy to have it at least. It's pretty good. Good backup boss killer. We're going down to the fourth floor. I think we should start maybe, let's go fishing a barrel. No, you know what, let's go with Gemini Carbine. It's got good range. We can stay away from the enemies. Should have looked for the secret room. I think we had one blank left over, but I can't recall specifically. Honestly, after the first floor, I think this has gone pretty well so far. We got 6 HP, which is where we want to be. Um, we got enough keys to not have to worry about, you know, where our uh, where our next items are coming from. I think that we're about roughly as well set up as we could be, although it admittedly would have been real nice to actually get Blood Brooch on the last floor. I think if we'd gone a little harder, um, we could actually be at too high of a level of curse, but maybe it's a good thing we weren't able to get Charm Torn, but I, I would have bought the Blood Brooch, maybe. See, this is fine. We're actually not affected by the conveyor belt, so that's Wax Wings coming in in the clutch, I think. Gotta admit, Hegemony Carbine actually kind of sucks, but I think to some extent, that's kind of what I'm looking for here. Is a gun that sucks. <laughs> as, as ridiculous as it sounds. I think a gun that sucks is, is what we want because it doesn't feel like I'm wasting future potential, but it probably is giving me a little bit of a, a bonus on this floor. So we are going to take ammo for the Yari launcher, and I keep doing it just because um, it is like a very quick way to take off maybe 50% of the boss's HP. So it's not as efficient as I'd like it to be, and the ammo doesn't last very long. Oh, sick. Super Space Turtle is actually pretty darn good. And uh, out of a green chest, I think it's, you know, roughly as good as we can expect an item to be, so... Real happy with that. You can maybe, like, with the Necronomicon active, we're doing okay with the Hegemony Carbine, at least. Trying to save a little ammo for it. Let Super Space Turtle finish the job whenever it can. Oh, that was real bad. Um... We're, we're a little light on weapons, though, I gotta admit, and I, I probably am more in need of a boss killer than a room clearer, but I'd make an exception for, like, a truly stellar room clearer, like a, a heroine or a mega hand. But for now, um, I'm, I don't know. When we run out of ammo for the hegemony carbine, I'm probably just gonna go back to the starter pistol for now. And then if we get an ammo drop, we'll take it for the hegemony carbine. Unless we've already fought the boss, in which case we'll take it for the Yari launcher, because again, it is nice to basically just hold down the right bumper and then take off like half of the enemy's HP. Half of the boss's HP. I don't know, man. I, I kind of feel like, if I'm being 100% honest with you, I kind of feel like the budget revolver is actually like better damage output than the hegemony carbine. The difference is a uh, little bit of range and we don't have to reload the hegemony carbine as often, but like, I actually feel like this might be better. 
At least it's better for like single enemies, I think. So you know what? We got a we got a little time on this one. We got a little symmetry bonus. Not symmetry. Uh, metronome bonus. Let's roll with this for a minute. See how see how it strikes us. And the super space turtle, I think it you know lowers our barrier for what we need to have as well. Winchester rifle. It's not bad. In fact. I really thought it would be a little bit better than that. <laughs> Do we want to use this as a room clearer? I think this is actually... It strikes me as a pretty okay bullet hell room clearer. Not sure about uh, this early on. Do you take... I guess you'd have to take hegemony rifle ammo. Hegemony carbine, I should say. I don't know. This is this is like the kiss of death to just keep swapping back and forth between them. But And in the end, you know, the other thing is that it probably doesn't end up mattering all that much. Like, the difference between using our budget revolver and using the uh, hegemony carbine might be like one hit total. Pretty unlikely to make the difference, although it would have done it on the last run. That's bad damage. So, maybe instead of like distracting ourselves with all these conversations about what guns we should have. We should just roll with it until we can't roll with it any longer and focus on making the dodges instead. It's going to be a pretty long floor here. I'd love the flawless, but to be real with you, we don't need 7 HP to win this. So, um, I think that this is just like a bonus, basically. Wallmonger does have pretty low HP, and we can fly... Well, there goes the Flawless anyway, so we don't have to worry about it. Um, I was going to say we can fly so we don't have to worry about the Molotovs as much, but we still do because we can still be lit on fire. And we're out of ammo already. Good lord. Just going to focus on Mind Cutter damage. Not going to worry about what phase we're in. Although it does make more sense if given the time to go for that single high damage burst. Completely easily could have flawless this as you can tell right there we only got hit once that's my bad but again I don't think it's gonna make a huge difference honestly 7 HP doesn't matter too much chaos ammo lit I can't remember if this actually gives us an ammo or it gives us an extra blank per floor I kind of wish that all the ammo lids did maybe some of them are a little overpowered with giving you one extra blank per floor but like just for like unity's sake it seems to make sense to me to make them all do the same thing in that regard, but I don't know. I'm not a game designer. I'm just the player asking for uh, asking for buffs, I guess. So I'm real happy to have Mine Cutter. Um, we'll take Yari Launcher ammo again, even though it's really starting to run out its usefulness. Um, the uh, the game is going fine. Yeah, remember, I like I said, I should have had that flawless. I'll be the first to tell you that. Wallmonger in general, pretty easy, but to get hit with blanks active on the on an easy fourth floor boss hurts a great deal. But well, either way, what happened happened, and I think that if we were gunning for like our fifth HP, I would be real bummed out right now. I'd be like, oh, we just wasted a huge opportunity. But in this situation where we already have six HP. I think it's totally okay. So let's just get down to our item room here. We know that it's going to contain... Uh, do we know what it's going to contain? Have we have we been to an item room yet? I thought we had. Oh, we got Super Space Turtle on this floor? Yeah, I think that, that was what we got on this floor. We definitely didn't have it when we fought Cannon Balrog, so this should be a gun. And sure, a green level gun is worth opening. I think Rattler is actually okay. Decent, at least. Should still be a little bit of floor left to explore here, though. Flora the Explorer? Doesn't mean, you know, just uh, click the like button if you enjoyed that joke. Uh, comment if you didn't enjoy that joke. Or comment and say, I like that joke if you like that joke. Okay. Uh, first time in maybe 200 years I've been hit by that enemy. A little embarrassed. I just walked right into that skull. You know why? I thought it was Super Space Turtle. At this point, I don't think you buy a key. I think instead you hedge your bets 
and you hope that you get a um, you get a sweet forge on the next floor where you can just buy something that's a little bit more useful. No secret room. All right, down to the forge. I still feel good. Gun, uh, the dragon should be pretty much sorted for us. I don't think there's a problem there. Bullet hell? Who knows, man. But I think the med kit's a nice help for it, at the very least. It's not an issue. And we'll continue moving on. Alright, this is the whole reason we got Wax Wings. So if I take damage on this room, Wax Wings was a mistake. But that room is about as easy as I expected it to be. Perfect. Not all four chambers are created equal. Some of them are going to be more dickish than others. No, no, no more four chambers, man. We got pretty lucky there, honestly. Dude, thank God for Super Space Turtle. What a huge helper. I will, I think it's definitely in our best interest to explore everything here. We're not immediately fighting, like, for our own survival, so... It seems foolish to me to kind of, like, throw away any extra chests or, or HP or potentially ammo drops or stuff like that, so... Um, we're just gonna keep ourselves going here. I'm gonna be, maybe, like, thrilled to run out of the Hegemony Carbine ammo. Because it is not getting the job done. Take that for sure. Take that, rewind it back. Convict got the shit to make your booty go smack. Whoa. And I have to say, as long as we only use Hegemony Carbine and or Budget Revolver on this floor, and the Yari Launcher, of course, I think we have an okay setup for Bullet Hell in the form of, uh, in the form of the fish in a barrel, as ridiculous as that may sound. Plus, actually, the mine cutter is probably, like, first choice. Then fish in a barrel, I think, is, like, I'm not gonna underrate it. I oftentimes underrate that gun, because it sounds bad. And also, like, when I first started playing Gungeon... I forgot we had the Rattler as well, um, even though we just picked it up. Um, when I first started playing Gungeon, I think I was under the impression, like, I'd pick up the Stinger and be like, The Stinger's okay! Like, I think they, they gussy up the early game drops to make your life a little bit easier. And it's... It, it set, like, an incorrect value curve for me for a while, where I'm like, yeah, the Stinger's alright. I mean, it's no, you know, black hole gun or something like that. But um, now that I think we have a little bit more of an honest appraisal of how these items work, I have to rethink those earlier valuations we made. More HP? Uh, honestly, a little bit underwhelmed by that at this point, but... Clicked in both sticks there and it worked. It was not worth a blank to get armor, but it's not a horrible trade. It's not worth it because, you know, the flawless is a little bit more important right now, but no big deal. So that's uh, even more HP. Every HP upgrade we get, if we ever get any more for the rest of the game, I'm going to be thinking like, man, we should have saved our money and gotten the blood brooch because that really... I mean, we'd be encountering a lot more jammed enemies, but still. That's, that's my, like, one that got away on this run right now. Is the, the blood brooch that could give us some lifesteal. That combined with the med kit sets us up so beautifully for uh, for bullet hell. Although it could still kill us. <laughs> the blood brooch wouldn't kill us, bullet hell could still kill us. Pretty easily, I think. So all these guys are getting uh, whittled down a little bit here. They have some tough dodges at the, at the outset and then never set. Probably some of the best dodging I've ever done here. Pretty clear that the, the budget revolver is not cutting it anymore, but I think if we can just ride it out for the rest of this floor, that's big. There's got to be four chambers on this room, right? No four chambers? I did see a post on my own subreddit that was like, this. End, I'm, I'm watching the Gungeon series, but I'm like 30 episodes behind. First off, what, you have like a life or something? Why aren't you watching the six videos that I put out on a daily basis, you know? That would only take all of your free time forever. That's all I ask. Um... This key drop is great, by the way. So now we don't have to buy a key to open our next chest. Uh, we'll open it regardless, even if it's a shitty chest, because 
a, a brown level gun. Who knows, man? It could still end up being pretty important for uh, bullet health. But um, they said, does NL ever start using more gun variety uh, than the budget revolver? And the answer is kind of the opposite. As 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 I've played more Gungeon, I've kind of become more attached to the budget revolver, and I understand that the true value of this weapon is that it has infinite ammo. It is not really like just a gun that you fall back on when things go terribly wrong. Like, it's not the best weapon in the game, but it's a decent weapon with unlimited ammo. So I think my my strategy has really become more about, like, exploiting that unlimited ammo as long as it's possible. I kept rolling on the conveyor belt, even though, since I can fly, it should have no impact. Okay, two ghosts. This one... Wants to buy you flowers, that's what I said now. This one is the ghost of Faulty Towers. And doesn't make any sense now. Yeah, you say it's a television show starring John Cleese. Yeah, I know it might be an inanimate object though. It can be the ghost that can run the... Th oh, God. This is what happens when you're like... A hundred episodes into a series, or like 150, getting up there at least. Your brain is still fighting. It's like, put together coherent commentary. It's not in Isaac mode yet, where it's like, you know, anything goes. It's still trying to like, put together a coherent uh, line of reasoning. And eventually that part of my brain will die, the structures will atrophy, and then... Oh, I, I got stuck on the wall again, but... My bad. Um, the structures will atrophy, and the commentary will just become ridiculous. Until then, we're gonna have to deal with, you know, what we got right now. Probably the worst parody of uh, Spin Doctor's Two Princes ever put on, you know, committed to YouTube at least. Little Miss, Little Miss, Little Miss Heroine. Uh, why can't I get that gun that gives me an instant win? Is that the, that's the Spin Doctors, right? They got Two Princes and they got Little Miss Can't Be Wrong. And then of course they got Bohemian Rhapsody. And um, Packle Bell's Cannon. Alright, last item room. Hopefully our uh, forge is nearby. It's a laser rifle. I'd say that's pretty terrible. Um, but, in the end, it is more gun. And more gun is good. Is it better than the budget revolver? I'd say probably. Uh, well, if you get another key, I think that's well worth doing down there. Honestly, I think we have a better chance of our forge being up here, but that's just a hunch. She's got someone else in mind. It's just a hunch. Ooh, it's some kind of shop-based situation. A gun manger. Uh, I think if we put the laser rifle and the hegemony carbine in here, we might not be displeased with what comes out. So let's use the laser rifle temporarily here. The other thing we could do, it's a little bit... This is like where I want Austin on phone a friend or something. Uh, you probably take Omega bullets if we can get the credits. Otherwise... Maybe just ammo, but... I don't know, do we even have anything that works well with, uh... With Omega Bullets? We might not have anything that actually benefits from Omega Bullets at all, now that I think about it. I mean, it, it would benefit a little bit, but I'm just saying we don't have any, any weapons with just one bullet in the clip, so... 24. I'm, I'm skeptical we're going to have to worry about it. I don't think we're going to get enough money to get uh, Omega Bullets anyway. Um, what I was going to say, though, is we can go to the Gun Muncher, and we can throw in the Laser Rifle, and we can throw in a Gemini Carbine, or we can throw in the Yari Launcher and something else, and we'd be hoping for, like, a better get. But I really feel like the Yari Launcher is kind of important. So I'm going to throw in the Laser Rifle here, and I'm going to throw in... Um, I mean, we could throw in the sawed off instead of the hegemony carbine, but honestly, we should have then thrown in the uh, the hegemony carbine instead of the laser rifle because the laser rifle had full ammo. But hopefully, a minor mistake. They belched out um, Molotov launcher. I think is just about the best we could have possibly hoped for here. Ninety-six bullets thanks to ammo belts, and this will be a really nice way to soften up rooms before we actually go uh, through with it. What we might end up doing is just buying uh, ammo, and if there's a key for sale, maybe buying a key as well. So that we can open the other chest up there. There is no key for sale, so I think maybe it's going to be HP and ammo. Uh, gamma Ray it might be okay. Look, why, why attempt fate? But I think ammo for the Yari launcher makes sense. 
and then we'll see what we have left over. But if we can get Omega Bullets, I'll probably get it either way, just because I'm... I have a bias towards passive items, you know? I find them a lot more fun, potentially more useful, but, like, definitely a lot more fun. I, that's more in keeping with the spirit of entertainment, I feel. So we're on our last shots out of the Yari Launcher. Wasn't really that productive against, um... Oh, I thought... I really thought we would kill this one. I can't be too mad because we did kill the other one. But the SMGs are so fucking annoying. <laughs> I, I'm not worried that we use two blanks there. Because, again, I'm not that worried about the Flawless, honestly. Yep, I uh, kind of uh, resigned myself to that situation in there. Should kill these guys. Now, is the Yari launcher the right choice? Or maybe we prefer to be sending uh, some shots at the Mine Cutter here. You know, something that functions pretty well as a room clearer or a uh, or a boss killer. Yeah, I rolled right into the enemy that time. Can't really complain about that. It's pretty much on me. Like, the Yari Launcher quite clearly is not going to uh, wreck face here. But actually, it will be a lot better against... Um, Let's try the Rattler out for a minute here, but it will be a lot better against, um, against the Lich, because each phase of the Lich fight has less HP, so I feel like the Yari Launcher could be a, uh, you know, like, flawless material for a first phase or a, a second or a third phase of the Lich fight, but... That seems pretty good to me. I, I could see the Rattler being, like, a useful boss killer. Um, the snakes aren't even hitting the ground, because I think they're just falling into the pit instead. We should be done with this fight here. You buy HP and ammo, unless you get a, enough credits to get the Omega Bullets, and then maybe, maybe you go Omega Bullets, but... Come on. Come on, though. Let's make a big leap. Okay, I think we got lucky that they kind of parted the Red Sea for us there. Honestly, gotta say good rolls in the back half of this fight, at least. And we're very lucky that we saved money, so we, we didn't miss out on anything, uh, like, chest-wise. Except for that one room that has armor and a brown chest, but, um... And then we have not enough to get Omega Bullets, so we'll just go back, we'll buy all the HP, and I think we'll buy ammo as well. And if we have enough, we'll get Gamma Ray. Uh, ammo's 48, we're gonna get it for the Yari Launcher, but I was, I'm skeptical, admittedly. Um, get the half heart, and then do you want the full heart, or do you want Gamma Ray? We can't afford Gamma Ray, so we get the full heart. I think it's the right decision, and I feel pretty good about going down to, to Bullet Hell. Um, our room clear. I think we're gonna start with the Molotov, and we're gonna combine it, um, with the Winchester Rifle. Ammo is probably gonna start by going to the Mine Cutter now. We're gonna fuck up our Metronome Something Fierce, by the way, but I really feel like the Molotov is uh, a no-brainer. And then, Winchester Rifle, good damage. Decent range. I think it's an acceptable choice for now. And then, the Rattler and the Yari Launcher are probably our go- And the Mine Cutter, as long as ammo holds out, are probably our go-tos for the Lich fight. But I, I genuinely think we got an okay chance. This is a dead end. I wish we could just, like, bounce out of this room immediately. Keep in mind. We also... Get used to hearing that Molotov sound, by the way. We also have, um... The medkit. Thank you. Because we have the medkit... We're not stuck at our existing level of HP. Oh, that's huge, too. Um, we're not stuck at our existing level of HP, so... I think we actually have, like, a pretty nice little window that we can work with here. And I don't know how much HP we're going to need in order to make the, uh, in order to make this work long term. But, oh good, every enemy here is immune to fire. That's, uh, pretty stoked about that. Honestly, this is where Super Space Turtles' time to shine happens, I guess. Whoa! 
Where'd you come from? I guess we might as well just amp up the metronome for now. Let Space Turtle, like, slowly take out the enemies along the way. Anyone can see the road that he's on. He's a Space Turtle. This song's by Fastball. They never blew up. But they had that other song on radio in 03. Okay, that was terrible. Like, both terrible damage and a terrible song parody. My voice isn't there right now. I would do terrible on the NBC show of the same name. The voice. Whoa. <laughs> Careful. Ammo. Uh, I think, for real, you go mine cutter. 240 shots in the mine cutter, pretty valuable. This is probably true, like, on every floor. So, what I'm about to say here might sound idiotic. But what I was going to say is, I feel like the longer you go without hitting a dead end on bullet hell, the more likely you are to not hit a dead end. Like, the more rooms that you go to, the less likely there is to be a dead end in that direction. But I might be A, wrong, or B, stating something that's extraordinarily obvious. How are you not dead, though? Kind of a huge waste here. Reload, reload. This is a good time to reload. These guys have got to go. Any enemy that shoots, like, bullets that can hit you from across the screen has got to be gone. Honestly, this room went just fine. We didn't have to go to it, but it, it went okay. I don't know how much the medkit heals, by the way. I've kind of been operating under the principle that it heals you for three. Hopefully that's correct. Or hopefully I'm wrong and it heals you for a lot more than that. Once this jammed enemy's gone, I'll feel a lot better. Whoa! <laughs> Try not to get yourself hit in the process. We are straight up immune to fire. So I, I shouldn't have even put myself... I mean, it's... I don't want to beat myself up over this, like, this late in the game, but... I really should not have been hit by Wallmonger. I, I was operating under the principle, which I get that I say a lot. You shouldn't operate under anything. Especially under the influence, but not under the principle either. Under the principle is also my favorite sequel to Steven Seagal's classic film, Under Siege. And there are several. Yeah. Okay. Tell you what. First off, we're getting over this pit. We're getting over this pit. Oh my god, because I don't want to get hit by these guys. Okay, okay. Okay, bad. Bad things happen there. Should not have been hit that much on this room. That's a no-brainer. Half a heart coming back feels good. Thank you very much. Dude got out of there just in time. He's immune to fire anyway, though, now that I think about it. Eight shots left in the Winchester. What comes next? Fish in a barrel, baby. Now, it may hard counter the shit out of the Molotov, but I think that's, that's, that's okay. See? Dude, fish in a barrel. It's holding it down. Easiest room of my life. Wait for the reload. I really, like, honestly was amazed that we got um, the Molotov launcher, because I genuinely think that's, like, one of the best items we could have expected at this point. Okay, that... Honestly, they threw, like, a lot of shit at me right there. It's all right. Get in there, kill the skelly. You may ask, am I thrilled with the damage that I've taken on this room? No. This room and the other room have, have thrown us uh, under the bus quite a lot here. But I'm relatively okay with our situation as it stands. Key probably would not have been the consumable that I would have chosen for myself. This is a tough room. Good. The confusion from fish in a barrel here is actually enormous. Possibly should have just been hit there. Beautiful. This is a tough room. 
Uh, the enemies already being dead is huge. Let's keep in mind, you know, three blanks for the boss fight as well, assuming we don't use any in advance of the boss fight, which is kind of a big thing to assume, but... There we go. Terrible place to stand. Managed relatively well, okay. Not a mimic. Uh, you know what? The Corsair is totally fine, man. Um, I think that that's like a pretty acceptable room clearer here. If we have to use it on the boss fight, I think it'll work just fine. Not gonna be my number one choice, but honestly it might be number three. And that sounds insulting, but number three, you know, we're probably gonna end up using at least three guns. Is my guess, at least. Kind of wondering at this point if it's worth using the Molotov if there's not enemies grouped together. Just takes a long time to shoot, and uh, we still have to dodge them while we're, uh, while they're on fire, you know? Oh man, we actually managed to knock one into the abyss. That doesn't happen that often. Is this guy on fire or what? Like, I can't tell. There's fire. There's flames on his face, but he's not red. Normally red is like the universal sign of I'm on fucking fire. Easy. Okay. This room's tough. I almost I took some shots at Space Turtle here. Just roast. And then you go for the toasting. Uh, not not great damage, I'll admit. Guys, gotta go. I honestly think with 2 HP med kit, we're still not that poor off. Admittedly, I'm over the dead ends and I'm over bullet hell in general. I'm ready to. I'm ready to be done with that. Oh my god, how do we not get hit there? So I think the Corsair becomes our next weapon of choice. coming out immediately. Remember, bouncing shots, pretty good. No homing shots, so, you know, if we get one hit out of it, that's pretty much all we can hope for. Two hits is like a miracle. But on rooms with multiple enemies, it's basically like we got piercing shots, so... I don't think it's bad. Honestly, jammed enemies have been pretty okay, pretty reasonable thus far. Still feeling good. Oh, dude, we didn't... <laughs> You're gonna think that I'm bullshitting you. My whole plan there was to get the Molotov to hit around the wall. So, as far as I'm concerned, that's mission accomplished right there. Boss fight. Okay, this is actually huge. I'm gonna take the Yari launcher. We might as well medkit right now. And it gave us four HP, so that's more than I expected. I am expecting that Yari Launcher will carry one full phase for us. So I figured, just get it done quick. If we want piercing shots for any phase, it's probably phase two, because it's a relatively stationary enemy with walls close to it. Okay, we're empty on the Yari Launcher, so it did disappoint me a little bit. Not enough to be too bummed out, though. And remember, we got full mine cutter ammo. I'm not gonna sweat ammo efficiency though. I'm just gonna tap shoot. First phase, really easy, but uh, to be honest with you, I don't. Uh, I, I think the worst is yet to come. So I'm gonna go back to the Corsair, and I, I actually think the Corsair could be the right choice here. But we'll, we'll see how quickly the, the uh, game goes. Of course, we got the Rattler, we got the mine cutter left. But the Corsair, I think, is strong for us here. Because the shots stay on the battlefield. Okay, now when we take damage... That's the Mine Cutter's time to shine. And you know what? I've immediately gone back on my original plan. Let's use the shit out of the Mine Cutter. I know we lost Metronome there, so probably like a suboptimal choice, but... Anytime we get hit, we have to go to town. 
That's like one of our principal benefits as the convict is that damage bonus we get from the photo. Which is also another reason why I'm not too incentivized that field to use blanks early. You know, we can use those blanks to keep us alive, but I don't want to use them to minimize the amount of damage that we can do. Second phase is done. We got four and a half HP. We're going to win this. I think we have to come to terms with the fact that we're going to win this game right now, and that's really exciting for me. Um, we're going to get a streak going here with the robot active, which is ridiculous. We're going to try out the snake launcher a little bit here. Shouldn't get too cocky yet, I suppose. Anything could happen. But I think it's pretty clear, you know, we're relatively set. Okay, you know what? I don't think this is doing it for us. I didn't want to use that. Wanted to use the mine cutter. Holy fuck. Where, why won't it let me select the mine cutter? There we go. I refuse to throw at the last possible second. And there's the win. All right. So we fucked this up. Bullet hell was not good for us, but we chose a good direction and we got it done. So for now, Let's finish this off. That's going to be two wins in a row, and I think we had to play pretty well there. Yari Launcher did fine, but we didn't really get super stacked or out of control good at any point there. So, I think that that win, we got to throw a little bit on skill. So, for now, I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, though, as we look at this post-mortem screen... Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Click the like button if you did. Subscribe if you want to see more, of course, and then... Our ammo Nomicon's telling us 400 or uh, 512 kills. That's pretty high. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. The two streak.